Welcome to the Coaches Show. I'm Darren Joins, Williamson County Schools Athletic Director, and pleased to have the guest today from Independence High School, Coach Scott Stidham. Coach, welcome. Thank you. Appreciate and Coach Chris Hughes, Fairview High School football coach. Welcome, Coach. Thanks. We're talking about tonight's WCS matchup. It's not a region matchup, but it is a WCS matchup. So looking forward to tonight's game and talking about it. I appreciate y'all taking time out of your busy schedules. Let's talk about this. We'll start with you, Coach Stidham. So fall break, everybody had a bye last week in WCS. Uh, mm -hmm. You play on the 4th. We take off last week. Are you glad to have this one and it not be a region game? So you could be jumping back in to a region matchup, but it being a non-region, is that a good thing? Um, I don't know. I guess it can be. I'll let you know how we play tonight. <laughs> but, uh, you know, sometimes it might have been good. We, we practiced Monday and Tuesday if all break, so you could, could have done extra time. We used it kind of as a spring practice, just generalities. But uh, we're just excited to play. Kids, it seems like a long time since we have played, so they, they had five days off. How about you, Coach Hughes? Uh, you know, you're talking about the rhythm of a game week. Last week obviously wasn't quite that rhythm. Do you like that it, it counts, obviously, but it doesn't count like a region game? Do you like that? Uh, in some ways. It depends. Uh, we need to get better, and playing a good team will get us better, playing a bigger school, because we have to win our next two. The only the only drawback is that, you know, worry about having injuries tonight, because we need everybody we've got left to be able to play the next two weeks. So, and it, and I'm not saying, you know, it's just when you play a, a te another team, anything can happen. So we're just trying to hopefully get through this game, get better, and limit those injuries tonight. And both of you, we'll talk about this here in a minute, but both of you, not again, this one's important. It's a game. But those last two, they're really going to be important to you if you're talking about playoff runs. Hey, talk about this. Uh, you both play non-region opponents that are outside of WCS, but this is a – it's non-region, but it's inside WCS. Does that feel a little different, Coach Stidham? Uh, we love playing Williamson County Schools. You know, the atmosphere is better. The student body is better. The – the media coverage is better. Our kids get excited about playing with people they grew up playing against. So uh, it's fun to play. And uh, Coach Hughes, and as we got a lot of respect for Fairview and know what we're getting ready to go into. Coach? Well, we got, um, you know, the atmosphere last year at Indy was good for our student section to see because they try to imitate some of the things. Indy had a great crowd last year, and uh, and it was good for us. So in, in that aspect, it's, it's great to play another county school to see. Plus, we know – the facilities are going to be good. Everything's good in the Williamson County area. So playing a, a school like that, it's kind of like we always use the David and Goliath call. We're like, hey, if we beat Indy, shame on Indy. If Indy beats <laughs> us, hey, we got enough. We, we play. I mean, they're a, they're a 5A school that we should have no business on the field with. So if we're able to compete, like in the last year, they put the ball on the ground a lot and kept it close for a while, and then they took off and left us. And we had that the same. When you used to play Ravenwood, we could play for the first half, but then you get into attrition of numbers and people that can actually help you on the field, and that's where we lose the battle there. But our guys are competitive, and they want that. They're not – here's the thing. We don't shy away from it. So our guys want that, and, you know, they're going to try to win on senior night against a, a good a county opponent. Let's talk a little game history. In fact, it's a short one. I went back and looked. Obviously, Fairview's been around a long time. Independence not quite as long. Last year was the first meeting between the two schools at the varsity level. I can't speak for JV or freshman level, but uh, as you talked about, Coach Hughes, close one for a long time. Independence ends up pushing it out there at the end, 31-7, again, at Independence. Uh, I'll start with you, Coach Stidham. I know it's a scheduling thing, but talk about uh, how this one even came about because you never played. Yeah, well, everyone in our region has a region game. And so uh, we were kind of an off week when, when a lot of people weren't. And, uh, Coach, you, you're you just kind of scrambling to find games. I think it was the last game that we each had. And uh, Coach and I talked, and I got a lot of respect for him because when I was in my previous school, we were in the same class for a while. We never played, but knew a lot about him, a lot of respect for him. And, uh and again, a chance to play a Wilco game is something we're always going to take advantage of. And Coach Hughes, people, you know, I think maybe more than other sports, football is sort of set up by the state. Uh, the region games are certain weeks, and trying to piece together a 10-game schedule is not as easy as people think it is. Well, and trying to find somebody to play you. I think uh, – Scott and I will both have an easier time this time than we did the time <laughs> before. Um, and and then that, that can be, you know, 
mirrors and, and you know, it may not be what you think because you don't know what the sophomores and freshmen are bringing for two years. So um, Independence had had, you know, uh, a thing where they had an open week. Honestly, I was trying to play Nolensville. Coach Derek and I had a relationship and we had talked and the week he wanted to play, he had a region game. Yeah. So I said, well, who don't have a region game? And that's when I reached out to Coach Stidham. Uh, he didn't have a region game and he was the only one. Luckily, he didn't have a game that week because really we were scrambling to find a game like we could you know I, I would hate to not have a full schedule regardless of who we had to play and I'm not willing to go to the private school division so we would have been having nine games if coach Stidham hadn't agreed to, to play or maybe find somebody out of state I don't know talk about this uh, so coach Hughes this time you've got a five region uh, five team region so you had four guaranteed games you got to find six others it's looking like you're gonna have maybe up to seven this time so it's going to be a little bit different. Could be eight or nine, depending on who chooses to go up and who stays down. You know, that decision is not final until Friday. But from what I'm hearing, we may have eight or nine, which will make it a lot easier to find one or two games. The problem is the people that I had scheduled from my non-region are the ones joining into our region. Right. So it just kind of leaves me up in the uh, in the ballpark again. And I've talked to uh, a couple of other county schools. Uh, Centennial and Nolensville are both, we're, we're going to see with the weeks work out. And, uh, and possibly, you know, I'm not committing to anything because we we don't know what's going to happen. Same with Independence. I'm not against uh, playing them again, although they're most of their stars are really young, so they're going to be pretty good <laughs> in this. And you just that's what you have to do. You're going to go through those cycles where, hey, my best players are sophomores and juniors, so I've got another year. So, and um, but we're we're going to try to find people to play that'll make us better and people to play that we can compete with. The, the bad thing is you don't want to play somebody that absolutely blows you out because they get nothing out of that either, and you don't want to play somebody you blow out because you get nothing out of that. Coach Stedham, talk about this, and obviously you take a look at your non-region uh, schedule, pretty tough. Uh, in fact, I saw where – I'm not trying to bring up bad bad thoughts here. <laughs> but your first it. six opponents are like 31-5, and five, which is pretty darn good. Now, some of those are region, but some are non-region. So, you know, what's interesting, I think, uh, for our 6A teams – even though you said, and Coach Hughes said, you might get a few more phone calls than you might be getting if you had, if you were six and one. Still, when you're talking about WCS and six A, people aren't necessarily lined up to play you either. No, that that's for sure. And again, when you when you don't want to play the private schools, that limits you. And then the people within a close enough drive, you know, by the time you get a bus, you don't have to charter a bus. Right. All those things are are factors in it. And then like. Coach said we had a, we had a game with a, an opponent last year and we were going to play and it just didn't match up and so that can all happen in the next month or so it's you're just kind of scrambling at that point. Well, it'll be interesting to see how that shakes out and again you're trying to deal with finishing up your season you got that hanging over your head a little bit which obviously comes up every two years. All right, let's talk about this. Uh, your last games before the break. These are these are good memories for both of you. Independence, you win 37 nothing at Overton. It's a Thursday night game, so you get kind of an extra day, game, uh, excuse me, day off. First win of the season. It's a region win, too, which means a lot. And if you look, if you look at kind of read the tea leaves a little bit, uh, unless something out of the ordinary happens, that border battle with Summit to end the season, I mean, let's face it, everybody's going to be excited no matter what. But it's looking like that's going to be a playoff spot when you play that game. Yeah, unless something – happens uh it definitely will come down to it it could be um it's probably gonna be the winner gets up gets to go you know it's like an early you're in the playoffs a little bit early but uh if we're worried about looking ahead we like coach said i think getting better tonight is the first key but yeah it's going to be a big game uh for sure you know uh, something that really stood out to me in that game uh and obviously both of you have a sophomore quarterback that's played pretty darn well this year uh Coach, you had five rushing touchdowns. That didn't surprise me. Four different guys. Had to be pleased with that. Yeah, it, we got the ball to uh, a lot of different people. I think Matt Horner might have been our leading rusher, and I'm not sure he scored, you know. So uh, we were able to get the ball to different people, and we played a lot uh, at the end of the game and got a, got another touchdown by our young guys. So it was, it was a good night for sure to get a win. Really happy for the kids. Well, and talk about, Coach, uh, going into the break. You know, you, regardless of your record, winning and having a week off is different than a loss and having a week off. For absolutely, sure. absolutely. They felt better about themselves. They got to go to school Friday, you know, and, and it's a lot easier to wake up after a win. And 
the, you know, this team has worked so hard and continued to get better, and they're fun to coach, and it was nice to see them get some results that they deserved. Coach Hughes, uh, you guys take on Montgomery Central. You come out on top 35-21. Uh, John Barrick, your sophomore QB, and you didn't know he was going to be the QB. You got kind of forced into that when Jax went, uh, McCoy went down early in the year. I've been watching his stats each week. They're better and better and better each week. That night, 13 carries, 106 yards, and he also threw it for 84 yards. Yeah, he had almost 200, a little close to it. And honestly, uh, John is playing quarterbacks just because he has a lot of moxie. He's a uh, He's not a pure thrower. He uh, he was going to play receiver. He's you know he can run and throw, but he's just an athlete. And we're just having to make do after we lost Jax this year because Jax threw for like 370 his first game and probably would have near 2,000 yards right now had he been healthy. So um, you talk about changing the dynamic and what we had to do. You know a lot more quarterback runs and things like that. So, but John has been pleasant. We knew we had to put the ball in somebody's hands that would give us that energy and that effort. And we don't question John every, every game. He's doing the best he can. And he is getting better, um, you know, and, and there's still things that we've got to clean up, but it's the ultimate team sport. So, you know, you have to put it, there's, there's years when Indy's throwing it all over the place this year, that triple option. I mean, it looks like he cloned all his kids AI because it looks like <laughs> no matter what, any single digit number, they look the same. And uh, and so when the triple option, you you got to tackle everybody, you know. Uh, Overton tackled the wrong guy a lot of times, and I'm, I'm afraid that uh, we may do that too. Which a lot look, you know, uh, look at Vandy. You know, they run right. the same type of thing and beat Alabama. So right. um, we're not Alabama. So uh, we just got to tackle and hope to hold. But John's done a great job, and I'm hoping tonight he can take a step because we have to win these next two regions. So if he can read Independence's defense and see a little more sophisticated alignment than what he'll see the next two weeks, it'll help him. Talk about this too, Coach Hughes. Uh, like – uh, Coach Stidham, you go in with the win before the break. You had that rain-soaked game against Creekwood the week before, and that's a good team you played. You bounce back, you take care of Montgomery Central, had to make that week off feel better. It did, and we were sour after that Creekwood game. That was a shutout. It was the worst offensive game since I've been coaching. Um, so our defense did everything to keep us in it. 22 points. If we hold somebody to 22, we should win. Um uh, now, this week may not be the case either. Independence defense is stout. Uh, but normally we're going to score between 30 and 40 points. And I think we were averaging up till then about 32 or 33 points. And, and it was a letdown. So we were we really got after them in practice. And Montgomery Central, again, it's a 4A school. They're, they're not gangbusters, but they're athletic. And they, they looked a lot like Creekwood. We just got off the bus better. And, uh, and I feel like we had to move that game to a Thursday, and we moved it. Wednesday afternoon, and it was, I think we were a little shell-shocked, making excuses for them, but we didn't get off ready to play. And we have those games, but uh, it felt so much better. I slept better over the break after getting that. And we practiced Monday, Tuesday, just like uh, Coach Stidham did. So we got those two extra days to kind of, with the guys that were here, a lot of our guys were gone on fall break. So I'm sure all the independents have stayed in town, but our guys left and went <laughs> out. But uh yeah, it felt a lot better, Darren, honestly. I, I slept better, and I know Coach Jackson did. Our offensive coaches slept a lot better. So. <laughs> well, talk about that week with uh, – the uh, because you both dealt with that. You know, and I know there was more to it than I'm letting on here because you're worried about lightning and those kind of things. But we started moving games. Now, you're a road game. What are you going to do? But I'm like, we've, we've got turf fields and it's raining. I thought football guys played out in the weather. Yeah. It's like, we need to play arena football, Coach Stedham. Let's play outside in the rain. I the asked them to come to us Friday. On I the asked proper them. day? I offered it. I offered it. I told them they could take up the gate, play at our place on Friday. And uh, it was their homecoming. So they didn't want to have their homecoming at our field. So uh, <laughs> I, I get it. I get it. I get it. I told them they could drive their floats around and be fine with it. I'm like, so. Coach Stidham, what Now, you guys played on Friday. You played Ravenwood, right? We did. And you played on Friday. So that, I was proud of y'all for playing. Yeah. Well, pre and it was their homecoming, too. And I think See? they had to postpone some of the, some of the, the events. events. But, yeah, uh, yeah it, was, it was raining and windy for sure. And uh, so it was a challenge to play in. But uh, football is so routine. You know, Monday right. is the same Monday leading up. So. Yeah. Uh, moving a game late is hard on anybody, but uh, so we, I was thankful to play on Friday. Well, and I know, obviously, basketball is different than football, uh, just the whole deal in terms of how you prepare and that kind of thing. So moving it makes it tough. I know as the road team, 
I always felt as a basketball coach, oh, you want to play at 3 o'clock on the wrong day? I'm in. Maybe it'll yeah. mess the crowd up. I and, thought that. I made a yeah. mistake. <laughs> I, don't know, I went there. Like, but I'm glad it rained on both their homecomings. <laughs> Maybe it would increase. At least it wasn't our homecomings. <laughs> hey, hey, let's talk about y'all's regions a little bit. So if you're looking at uh, Coach Stedham, Region 6, 6A, you got Brentwood and Ravenwood, both 3 and 0. Franklin, 2 and 1. You're sitting at 1 and 2. Summit, Overton, 0 and 3, but they play this week. So that's mm -hmm. going to. So there's a lot to be determined. You still got Brentwood uh, mm -hmm. next week. But it is looking like, here's what you got to like about it. If it ends right now, you're in the playoffs. So you control your own destiny, so to speak, in terms of the playoffs. Yeah, that's true. And, uh, again, we just got to keep winning. But you could also say Summit controls their own destiny, too, going into it. And, you know, Franklin plays Ravenwood, so there's a lot more the top end that they can work on. And, uh, you know, we – we just, again, we need to continue to get better, which I feel like we have throughout the year. Our kids keep working, and uh, it's going to be a challenge. But if we're looking ahead to that, we're going to be in trouble tonight. Hey, and this will be the last looking ahead question I have for you. I've got one more <laughs> for Coach Hughes. Uh, you make the playoffs. If you get in, I think history kind of shows, regardless of what regions and leagues you're in, you've got a shot if you get, you get in. You never sure. know. I definitely think the league you're playing in, you get in, you, you got a chance. Well, I would say our region and non-region schedule has us prepared for whoever <laughs> we play. You know, I've, uh, we could go into the whatever Division Two, whatever. We could play IMG, and it would be about what we've played, it seems like. So, yeah, I think there's no doubt you have a chance once you get in. I think any of our six that get in would have a chance, whoever it is on the first game. Definitely agree with that. Coach Hughes, let's take a look on your side. Region 6, 3A, you guys in Heritage, both 2-0. and o. Sycamore, 1-1, one and one, and you still have away matchups at Sycamore and at White House Heritage. Uh, Cheatham County sitting at 0-3. Uh, let's talk about this. The game, I feel like that White House Heritage is kind of a little thing with y'all. feels like there's this little rivalry. Your teams have been good. It's final game of the year. It's going to mean something. Am I right in saying that? Well, it feels like that's built the la up. Last year it came down to the last game between us and them for the region title. Yep. But we Sycamore's better this year. They had a running back that's really good. They've got some defensive guys that fly around. So, again, not looking to that White House Harris game. If we don't handle Sycamore, it's probably not going to matter. Uh, and Sycamore is going to give us a game. But White House Heritage – you know, the uh, coach's son is a quarterback. They throw it all over the place. And, you know, every game is so weird. It's all about their strength against your strength. So matchups aren't the same. I'll give you an example. Um, Stratford beat Sycamore. Sycamore beat Lawson. Lawson killed Stratford. Right. And that makes no sense. No. You, know, you look around, and, and you can look at those all over the place. So matchups are more important. Uh, I think our matchup with White House Heritage is better. Like, I think we can defend them a little better. Sycamore is more physical and pounds it, like East Hickman, people we had trouble with. And uh, so I'm, I'm really hoping we can handle Sycamore, and then I'll worry about, you know, how we're going to stop White House Harris. But those two games, I don't think they can fall at a better place. I mean, we've got this game tonight to iron out all the things that we need to work on. Even if they don't work, we can look at it against Independence and see we're actually using this whole game as, hey, and I'm wanting to win, but we're also saying – what works for us and what don't. Because with John at quarterback, we've had to find a new identity this year. And uh, I think this tonight on defense and offense, we'll know, you know, hey, and, and heck, if, if Independence runs it through us, Sycamore might be running triple option next week. So, you know, it's a copycat league. You know, when they see something work, they're going to try to do it. So. Hey, if they can put that in after yeah. one week, I'll be impressed. <laughs> we'll hope for a lot of fumbles if they do that. They'll put it on the ground a few times and help us. But, we had to get through tonight first. So, Coach Hughes, uh, last question about this, but talk about, and again, I'm, I'm assuming here, so that's the, forgive me for that, but one versus two. I mean, you'd get a home game, obviously, to start the playoffs, but there's a big difference there between one and two going to the playoffs. A big difference in who you play, and with our region especially. But this year, East Nashville, Liberty Creek, um, Stratford, Maplewood, all of those teams, like, and this is the same with Sycamore and us and White House – the good thing about it is anybody can beat anybody. The bad thing about it is anybody can beat anybody. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Maplewood had one win last year, came to us and pushed us to the brink right. in the first round of playoffs. So we don't count anything. Like our, our region and their region, the crossover. But you're right. When you get in, you got a chip in a chair. 
but the higher seeds you get, and statistically you should be able to fare better. So we're trying to get that one seed. The good thing is we're going to make the playoffs for like the straight whatever year. So yeah. that that's the good thing. Um, the bad thing is if we don't finish, it's going to be a rough draw right off. Well, the bat. it's nice to be at home for sure for a longer period. We need of time. that home game. Let's talk about your teams a little bit more specifically offensively. So Coach Stedham, uh, we talk about Horner, your quarterback, young man who's getting better each week. I almost feel like his experience, especially who you've played, he almost seems like a junior now. He's, he's, he's understanding what you want him to do. Absolutely. We tell our, at the end of the freshman and JV season, we tell our freshmen, you're now sophomores, sophomores are juniors. So he's been playing varsity, but uh, yeah, it, it's helped for sure. Our offensive line has gotten a lot better also, which, which definitely helps him. And, you know, we've got a bunch of kids. He's one of them that shows up every day and works hard. And we've got good football coaches that care about our kids. So we ought to be getting better. And uh, they are. The kids are buying into what we're doing, and uh, he's he's a testament to that. You know, everybody looks at him, and when he messes up, everybody knows it. Uh, but Matt's done a great job, along with the rest of our guys. Coach Hughes, let's talk about. We talked about your QB a little bit, but talk about Mr. Everything, Mr. Murray, who's doing a great job for you, really on both sides of the ball. Yeah, we're counting on him, and I've ran him a lot less this year than I did last year, you know, in the playoffs. I think he had 37 carries against Maplewood for like 300 yards, but this year we've limited him. I'm, I'm blessed to have some young kids that can run the ball too because defensively we have to have him over there. He's playing the outside linebacker, and uh, and I'm on him every game because I, I, I expect a lot out of him. He's a senior. He's kind of our team leader. So um, we have a lot of juniors over there helping him and sophomores, and, and he's had to kind of – you know, corral everybody in. But, yeah, we're, we're counting on Trayvon. And, but we do have other people that can run the ball and other people that can do things. John can run the ball. So we, I, I feel the same as, uh, as he does. We, you know, we'll have – I think we had nine different people carry the ball at Montgomery Central. So, you know, it's, there's, if you hone in on one person, I mean, it's just who has the hot hand that night. You know, that, the quarterback last game against – oh, he like – he was running with the ball sometimes and nobody knew he had it. Like he's getting really good at pulling it out and making the right reads. And uh, tonight, you know, if we can make the right blocking assignments and make the right reads, it'll help us too. Well, for folks, uh, listen, this could be a, a one-score game, and it could be over in an hour and 45 minutes. You guys uh, <laughs> run the ball like you both are, so it'll be interesting to see how that, how that works out. Let's talk about you defensively a little bit. Uh, Coach Stedham, I think this is fair to say it. I already know your answer, but let's talk about it. That gauntlet of a schedule – has helped your defense too. It had to feel, I know Overton wasn't the same team as those others, but it had to help you going into that game who you had played before. Oh, no doubt. I, I believe playing good people helps you unless you get so banged up and get hurt. Right. But, but you can do that playing a bad team. Or you practicing. Know? Yeah, no yeah. doubt. We've it's, lost it's, several there. Yeah, right. well, and we have too, so it's just part of it. So, But yes, playing good people has definitely helped us. We faced everything from teams that throw it all the time to wing tee to everything in between it. So, yeah, I, I feel like our schedule. And you know, I'm not sure that high school defensive coordinator is in the hardest defensive coordinator job in America because you see everything. You know, the NFL pretty much sees this. Right. The college has a little bit more, but we we see everything. So our kids, I feel like, are prepared, and we're going to see a lot tonight. They do a great job of, of getting the ball to the right people. Let's talk about your defense, Coach Hughes. You, you give up 41 points in that week one loss to East Hickman. Since then, you've only given up 13 points a game. That's a side of the ball that's really improved for your for your squad, too. It has, and it's the type of teams we're playing. Like, you know, and I, I think it's all about matchups. And last week, what was funny was uh, Montgomery Central was a – uh, eye off tackle team and when we stuffed them the first two possessions they went to triple option the rest of the game so <laughs> we, we were not prepared and my defense coordinator was like what in the world and uh, like he said it drives him nuts because we prepare for everything they've got and then when you come out with something totally different the defense just looks at each other like, <laughs> what do we do now? You know, uh, Coach, which, you didn't tell us about Yeah, that. <laughs> that's exactly right. That's exactly right. And, and, uh, and it's, fr it's frustrating because then, you know, you have some success with this or that. Eventually we figure it out. But we have had a week to practice and, and those extra two days because what they run is so hard to stop. It's not, you know, the wing, you got teams that run wing T, five wide, and then you come in with triple option. It's just every week is something different. And our defense 
has just gotten more aggressive. That was what I told them at the beginning. We were catching East Hickman, catching them. Like if we could play East Hickman now, I feel better. Uh, we had them week one, and that happens every year. We've lost our week one game the last four years. So I'm like, we are going to do everything we can to win a week one game <laughs> next year. Uh, but we, we've gotten better, but our defense has really went downhill. Now we've started our two middle linebackers are making over 15 tackles a game. Our D-line is starting to eat blocks up and do what they need to do instead of just, you know, uh, catching. And then our back end is making tackles and saving touchdowns because when you break through there, you know, the guy, you got a choice. Your safeties and corners can go get them or they can let them run through a touchdown. Preventing big plays and electric, like long runs and things, they're real good at that. You know, even against, I'm watching, you know, the Ravenwood game and shoot a good play for Ravenwood was five or six yards. Like it wasn't like Ravenwood went, oh, here's a 90 yard touchdown. So, you know, it's, we can't, we're gonna have to be real consistent, not make penalties and do our blocking assignments just to move the ball and keep keep them off the field. So, Coach, I had to do a double take on this one too. Will Frank in that Montgomery Central game, 19 tackles, 19. Yeah. Yeah. That's a season for some people. <laughs> yeah, especially for somebody who weighs like 145 pounds. Uh, <laughs> now Will, um, has played awesome, and, and again, he's getting better. Um, you know, every week Coach Ruiz has him reading somebody and doing something, and when he forgets that, he's out of position. But when he's in position, normally he makes a play. And uh, he's going to have to shut off some blockers that in Indy has that are really good at getting their hands on people. But him and Canyon Porter, our two middle linebackers, have been a good surprise, and the best news for me is they're both juniors. So we got them both back. Coach Stidham, as we head towards the playoffs, and I'm, I'm talking playoffs as if you're making the playoffs. I'm speaking positively here. Special teams can be the difference. you got to like where you're at there. Yeah, we do. Uh, Landrick Maskey continues to be who he is as our kicker. And then Andrew Bingham uh, had three punts against Overton, averaged 50 yards, and all three ended up inside the 20. One was a 72-yard punt. And so those two are weapons. And, uh, yeah, we're really excited about them. Our return's getting better. And uh, we, we're just uh, we work really hard at special teams. That's a key part of the game, and it continues to improve for us. And Coach Hughes, same thing. Have you been pleased with your special teams so far? I have. Beckham Adams is doing really good kicking. We've had good coverage right now. I'm a little worried about Independence return game, and and we know, you know, you tell your guy where to line up. We've been a lot deeper this week with our punter. Uh, which I'm hoping they have to punt a few times. So that would be nice <laughs> if they had to punt about five or six. I'd be real happy. Even if he hits at 70, I'm fine with it. Um, but uh, our, our special teams have been decent. I think we, we struggled at the start of the year defending an onside kick. We've given up four onside kicks this year. And that's the focus that we've had. We have different. So we're not as well blocking up front because we got a lot of hands people on the field because I didn't want to <laughs> have any business come in and us not get the ball at all this week. So, so I can't uh, decide, Coach Sidham, if he's giving up some information that he didn't mean to or he's actually doing that on purpose that they're ready well, to we ran, Well, we ran 20 new trick plays this week. <laughs> and and we worked 30 minutes on our own onside kick. So, we, you know, I'm, I'm sure that he'll be ready for that. But, uh, it's going to be a busy warm-up. So get ready for all <laughs> All right, let's talk a little bit more about tonight's game and some keys. Again, we're talking about the, this WCTV game of the week, Independence traveling to Fairview. Coach Stidham, we'll start with you, and this could be offense or defense or maybe one of each. Give me some keys for your squad tonight. Well, number one, we got to take care of the football. You know, I think he said we, we put the ball on the ground last year, and, and we're not quite as explosive as we were a, a year ago. So we've got to take care of it. Number one, and then I, I also think, you know, I know what we're going into an atmosphere up at Fairview. You know, I remember coaching at that place. We're going to a community that loves their football program and has been around. And so it's going to be different for our kids, and they need to understand. I keep telling them they're, they're going to play really, really hard in a great atmosphere at senior night. And if we don't match that intensity and enthusiasm, it's, we're going to have trouble tonight. How about for the Yellow Jackets, Coach Hughes? We have to force some turnovers. I mean, that's the thing. They're taking care of the ball is huge because when they run triple option, we just got to time the mesh up and hope we can make him make a bad read. Um, but we have to play assignment football. We've got to do our job on both sides of the ball assignment-wise because if you don't, then they're going to break it. And, you know, those electric plays, like I was talking about, if they've got to move it three or four yards at a time, I'm good with that. I just don't want to see them running down the field for 40 and 50 yards. So if we can limit big plays, force some turnovers, and just keep it close, and we got a chance to win because we're at home and our crowd will be there. And I've sold our guys all week that what a better way for senior night to beat a big school in a big atmosphere when nobody, you know, here the crowd's there. So, so it would be a huge win for us. 
Um, but like I said, most of all, I, I've told them, you know, your expectation is to try to win every football game. Our goal every year is to win a state championship. We fail every year. But we're not going to stop trying to reach that goal. Well, gentlemen, I appreciate you being here and taking time out of your busy schedules. We appreciate it. Thanks yep. for having us. Thank you for joining us for the Coaches Show. We'll see you next time.